Please stay tuned after the program for the entertaining bonus video all about the caboose. Everyone have your tickets ready, please. Because here they come, clickety-clack, down the track. It's time for lots and lots of big steam trains galore. All aboard. Lots and lots of big steam trains. Lots and lots of big steam trains. Lots and lots of big steam trains galore. Watching those trains go by Smoke rising up into the sky A wonder to my eyes Rolling on down the railroad track I wonder when those steamers are coming back Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains, and lots of big steam trains Travel back in time Fire and steam and the engineer From coast to coast and far and near Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains alone Nothing like the sight of a big steam train As she travels from town to town Pulling those cars through the snow and rain then she's homeward bound Down that track comes a big machine Riding on clouds of smoke and steam Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains Lots and lots of big steam trains oh, Thank you. 
like thunder and lightning fast How I love the roar of the rails 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 Listen to the rhythm of the clickety clack Big locomotive chugging down the track Thick black smoke reaching up to the sky Box cars dancing from side to side How I love the roar of the rails
along the way. A big machine of fire and steam, a legend of yesterday. Big steam engine, a working night and day. By the fields, back when giants roamed the earth, made of iron and steel. A mighty sound that shook the ground as the engine turned the wheel. Big steam engine, a passing by the fields. Sound. Smoke up pouring out the stack and hear those pistons pound. Not long ago they carried the load and now they are renowned. Those big steam engine just hear that mighty sound. Fire and steam, a legend of yesterday That big steam engine, a working night and day Big steam engine, a working night and day Big steam engine, a working night and day
sun is up and the day is new The weather's clear and the sky is blue Let's take a ride on down the trail Traveling on that big steel rail Throttled back and the boiler stoke The sky above is filled with smoke Let's journey far in a railroad car And see what down the line All aboard It's time to get all aboard All aboard It's time to get all aboard All aboard It's time to get all aboard All aboard To that clickety clack as we travel down that railroad track. The world outside are passing by as we speed along on those railroad ties. The future lies just up ahead. A station house and the flagman shed. The whistle blows and the headlamp glows. Sit back and enjoy the ride. All aboard. It's time to get all aboard. All aboard. It's time to get all aboard. All aboard. It's time to get all aboard. All aboard.
train fans have you ever heard of a railroad car called a caboose a caboose is a bright red car on the end of a freight train they were used by train crews to keep watch on the train as it rolled down the track cabooses also carried tools so the crew could work on the train if it broke down they also had stoves bathrooms and beds to sleep in for long trips you don't see too many cabooses these days but in the past, you could find them on the end of just about every freight train that crisscrossed this great country. Would you like to learn more about them? Great! All aboard! Well, the use of cabooses started way back in the 1800s. Around the 1830s, the railroads were just getting their start, connecting cities and towns all across America. As rail travel changed from a strange curiosity to a popular way of getting around, trains started to get longer and longer. Some freight trains were getting to be so long that the train crew in the locomotive cab of the engine couldn't keep a lookout on the end of the train. At some point, railroad owners got the smart idea of putting an extra car on the end of some of these long freight trains. 
These cars had a place for members of the train crew to keep an eye out on the rest of the train in case there was ever a problem. And so, the caboose was born. Now hold on there a minute. You might be thinking, now where in the world did they come up with such a goofy name as caboose? Well, you see, the word caboose actually comes from the old German word kabhus, meaning a cabin on the deck of a ship. If you think about it, the railroad caboose served as a cabin for the train crew, much like the cabin on the deck of a ship. So with that, the name stuck. Early railroad cabooses didn't look much like the cabooses that you're probably familiar with. They had flat roofs, and quite often, they weren't even painted red. It wasn't until the 1860s that a bright young man had the idea to stack some crates up in a boxcar on the end of his work train so that he could look out of a hole on the roof of a car to keep an eye on the rest of the train. It wasn't too long before the first cupola caboose was built. The cupola is the strange-looking raised section that you see on most cabooses. Using a ladder inside the caboose, train crews would climb up into the cupola to look ahead towards the front of the train. Now, I've done a lot of talking about this train crew, but who actually would ride in the caboose as it traveled down the track? It's the train conductor, of course! The conductor is the person who is in charge of the train. He works with the engineer to make sure the train travels smoothly and safely down the tracks. When he wasn't watching the train, the conductor would file paperwork or answer calls on his radio. When he wasn't busy at work, he would make food on the caboose's potbelly stove or sleep in one of the bunk beds on board the caboose. Along with the conductor, a brakeman also rode in the caboose. It was his job to run along the roof of the train and tighten the brakes on each car when the train was about to go down a hill. Now, there were many different types of cabooses, but what were they? As I said before, the first cabooses were called flat roof cabooses. Some of these were built as brand new cars, and others were box cars that were turned into cabooses by the railroad. Most of these early cabooses were gone by the time the 1900s came around. Another type of early caboose was the bobber caboose. The cool thing about these cabooses is that they had just four wheels. Most cars built for railroads in America had eight wheels. Bobber cabooses got their name because they would bob up and down as they rolled along the track. Now, that sure sounds like one bumpy ride to me. Drover's cabooses were some of the oldest cupola cabooses. They looked like a combination of a passenger car, a baggage car, and a caboose all rolled into one. Drover's cabooses were very common on livestock trains out in the Old West. One of the most common of the cupola cabooses that was built was known as the Wide Vision Caboose. These were some of the last cabooses that were built for America's railroads. They had a cupola that was wider than the rest of the caboose, giving crews an even better view of the train. Many Wide Vision Cabooses were built by a company called the International Car Company, and others were built by the railroads themselves. While most cabooses had cupolas, there were some that did not. One of the most common types of these cabooses was called the Bay Window Caboose. Instead of having a cupola, these cabooses had a large area of windows called bay windows that came out from each side of the car. These cabooses were super popular on railroads that had low tunnels. One last type of caboose that also did not have a cupola was the transfer caboose. These cabooses were not normally used on long freight trains. Sometimes railroads run freight trains shorter distances when they need to move freight cars from one rail yard to another. These trains, called transfer moves, are the trains that transfer cabooses were used on. Transfer cabooses have large end platforms that were perfect for train crews to stand on as the train was switching tracks in the yard. As the years went on, cabooses continued to be very important cars, but one day they pretty much vanished from just about everywhere. Where did they go and what happened? 
Well, as time went on and people turned to other ways of getting around, like airplanes and trucks, the railroads began to look for ways to save money so that they wouldn't lose business to the trucks and airplanes. With all sorts of new technology, it was decided that cabooses were no longer needed and too expensive to keep using. The replacement for the caboose came in the year 1969 with the invention of something called an end of train device or EOT for short. They are also called FRED, which stands for flashing rear end device. Basically, these are little metal boxes that are connected to the train's air brakes on the end of the last car. They send information about the train's speed, direction and brake pressure to the crew in the locomotive. With this nifty little invention, the days of the caboose were numbered. The Florida East Coast Railway was the first to replace all of their cabooses with end-of-train devices. And by the middle of the 1980s, cabooses were pretty much all gone from America's railroads. Some were sold to people and reused as sheds or cabins. Others were given to railroad museums, but most of them were sold for scrap so that the metal could be melted down and reused to make new things. But good news! The caboose is not completely gone. They are still used by most freight railroads, just in much smaller numbers. These days, they are called shoving platforms and are used to help switch freight cars around in railroad yards and on various sidings and spurs. And don't forget, many museums and tourist railroads still use cabooses for giving train rides. So, if you're lucky, you can still climb up in the cupola of an old caboose and travel along the railroad as you listen to that clickety-clack sound of the wheels as they roll down the track. It may not be like the old days, but it is sure a fun experience all the way. Well, thanks for coming along with me today to learn all about the history of the caboose. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you did too. Remember, you can always learn even more about cabooses at your local railroad museum. Thanks for watching.